So you all probably remember that on the last uh, developer presentation, I talked about some of the changes uh, that we introduced in our technical roadmap for the front end. Uh, specifically, it was not using Smart as much, um, using the Composition API in Vue 3, using the Pinia stores for um, data handling. And today, I don't want to go through this again. Uh, the goal today is really just go, go through real example that, uh, you know, uh, happened since then. What's really cool about this example that this uh, came as an external contribution uh, from, from Nicolas. So it's also nice to see this being picked up uh, from, from outside and it was uh, done very well. I really did just some small touches. And um, so let's uh, go through that example. And the focus is, I guess, mainly like the page architecture and understand how everything like kind of connects together. So I don't want to dive into lots of details, really just overview. But if you have questions, um, you know, at the end, I am more than happy to dive into any of these uh, details. So just as a reference point in the storybook, so there is page, uh, you know, called page architecture, which kind of describes some of the principles uh, that we will be going through. So that might be something for you to look at if you want. And then there is a example page, which I created at the beginning to illustrate the structure, but it's example page. So it's kind of hello world situation. So that's not what we use today. We will use the more real world um, example, but definitely recommend it. If you are starting new page, just copy paste this folder. It gives you a great starting point. So uh, the page we will be talking about is when the reviewer um, uh, gets assigned and he look at his uh, uh, assignment then in case there has been a couple more rounds, so maybe this is his second round, he would like to look at his history. And that was the new functionality that Nicholas was working on. So on the lower half of the page, you can see uh, something that has been there for a long time. It's built in uh, older legacy stack with the jQuery. And the part that we wanted to include is, is, the, is on top uh, called previous uh, reviews, and that's built in with these new principles. Um, so once uh, click, it's relatively simple. It lists all the uh, review rounds that happened before. And if you select one of them, it gives you the details about what happened in that previous round. So you can remind yourself what you did recommend and what was the communication. So that's the functionality. So let's see, uh, you know, how it's, all puts together, uh, build the surface. Maybe before doing that, last thing I will show you in the storybook is that this page is also included here in the storybook. Um, and on the uh, main page, uh, we can see kind of the configuration that it expects from the server when the page is uh, loaded, expressed as a uh, props of this uh, of this page, which is then automatically showed here. We will see that briefly in the code, but here it's um, basically document what the data it expects from the server on the load uh, to be able to, um, you know, carry on. And then yeah, I'm the... going to ask dumb questions here. The uh -huh. storybook page that you have there listed is for the entire page, including the legacy content, or is it just for the new content? That's just a new content. I don't think we would be able to render the PHP in storybook that would, um, yeah. So um, that's also one of the uh, motivations to migrate things to storybook because uh, we can't really snapshot things and screenshot things uh, as easily, uh, you know, with the legacy bits. So here it's displaying, you know, just the upper part. Let me see if it works, yeah. So, um, so uh, here as a stories, we have examples for uh, different uh, scenarios. And this is for kind of testing, documenting purposes for uh, screenshotting and things like that. But again, that's not, that's not the topic. So let's dive in how it's connect. For, for you important is that, you know, the main 
main page is just listing, you know, uh, these items, and then you can open model which uh, lists the details of the actual review. That's that's only what you kind of need to remember for now. So if we go to the codes, so this, okay. So let's start how it connects uh, the new stuff with the legacy stuff. So on the left side, we see the Smarty template, which was handling that legacy page. It's rendering the individual steps for uh, the uh, for the step-by-step -step process uh, to submit the um, review. And here we snuck in, you know, this new page, and that's rendering, you know, uh, the the upper part. And over time, as we will be improving, you know, um, this review page, obviously we would be you know, moving more of this content inside the Vue.js as, you know, um, we, will, we will probably rewrite this in Vue.js at some point. Um, okay, so, so this is how we can kind of snuck in uh, this page. And you can see that what we are passing is this page init config. So if you look at the corresponding handler on the PHP side, uh, we can see that we are passing the page in config here. And this is the review round histories, uh, which we saw also in Storybook in the props. And this is the array of the previous round histories with a uh, couple details like the submission ID, review round ID, review round number. <clears throat> so this is this is the kind of information that's you know being passed on when the page is loaded. So this is kind of the bridging part. So now we can, you know, make, uh, look completely to the Vue.js part. So if we go to the lib UI library, pages, reviewer submission, we can see the structures. We don't care now about the stories and MDX, that's for storybook documentation, but we do care about the main uh, component uh, for the page. So in the upper part, uh, we can see basically that uh, we, we are iterating over these review round histories to show, you know, the buttons um, that we saw in the application. Um, and here uh, we can see in the composition API how we are defining the props. And this is, you know, where the storybook took that information that we are expecting review round histories. Um, so now what we obviously could do in the composition API, we could just write the logic directly inside the component and that would be perfectly fine. Uh, but we decided uh, to uh, put the logic inside the Pinia stores and I elaborated more details in the storybook, but in general, I believe it will pays off in terms of the extensibility and uh, being easier to connect uh, to the store from the components that are coming from the plugins, for example. So the experience is very much the same, just it's split it uh, to two files. So one file is the uh, page component and the other component will be the store. So let's open that. Submission so page store. So this is the business logic of, of that component. And again, this could be, you know, this could easily be moved to the left, but we we just split it because we believe that the Pina stores has lots of uh, to offer for extensibility. Uh, so if you look at what this is uh, what this is doing, it exposes uh, two things. It exposes the actual review round history, which is then used in the template template uh, on the top. In here, this is where we iterate over it. So that's one thing that uh, you know that the page needs, it's a simple page. The second thing is to be able to open the model and that's triggered from the button directly here. Here we can see some of the recently made API for opening site models, uh, where we basically pass uh, either uh, actual component as a first argument or component name if, if that would be from plugin, you would basically register the component through the name and then you could use the name here. And as a second argument, we pass the props um, to that component. So 
let's look at that uh, site model. So that site model, um, let's put it on the left and store on the right again. <clears throat> so uh, that site model has its own store as well. Uh, and we don't have to necessarily do it for every site model. If, if it's very trivial site model doing very little, it's fine if that um, site model is just getting data from the main store. Uh, from the page. But if it's something relatively complex or, and relatively independent from the main page, then it's a good opportunity to uh, do the logic separately. So it's reasonably sized. So a um, couple of things here. Um, first thing I would look at is maybe the definition of the props. So again, here is clear defined what this site model requires to actually run. This is all required. Um, and then again, this is just the connecting to the store. So it's passing the props to the store and the props has the, all the business logic and the, and the data. Um, let me actually start from the end of the store because the end of the stores, uh, show you what kind of things do we expose. So we basically want to expose everything that we need in the component, in the template to render uh, the data. So we can see, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, things that are uh, computed um, to be able to render these things. So maybe let's look at the example of article metadata. If I go back quickly to the page, the article metadata is this column. When we have, you know, a uh, bunch of uh, metadata, it's repeating pattern. So how this can be implemented quite nicely is that basically always if that information is available in the uh, metadata, we will, you know, add it to this structure. So we basically like create configuration and then this configuration is passed to the template and in the template we uh, basically iterate over that uh, configuration. Uh, benefit of this is that, for example, um, you can see that here is like repeated uh, pattern in terms of the styling. So if you don't want to repeat the styling, then we either have to create like separate component to encapsulate the styling, or we can use the uh, basically loop uh, to iterate over it. Um, and it's also nice that we kind of have separately logic uh, what to include when, um, what to show when. So it's not... Uh, all in the templates because there is already enough in the templates to uh, to decide on, and that's um, you know that's 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 mostly it. Um, one nice thing uh, that so far I aim to uh, do is that if there is a site model, I try to basically just uh, pass all the information to the site model through the props and not connecting the stores behind the scenes together, because then it makes very clear um, separation um, and it's easier to reason about it. Maybe there might be cases in the future where it's well justified, where the store in the, inside the model would be talking to the store in the page, because that's technically possible and easy, um, but so far I'm trying to avoid it and having just this clear separation where you uh, open a site model, you pass the data it needs, and then it kind of is isolated and it works on its own. It's talking to API to get uh, things it needs, which uh, actually reminds me, let's maybe ha uh, having a quick look how we fetch the data because we don't get the review history and all these metadata you know, on the load page because we don't need it. So Nicholas created the API, which provides this information. Uh, so, uh, and that's all handled in these five lines. So first is basically just to construct the URL. So here is helper, which uh, helps to create the URL for the, for the API. Then we pass this URL to the, another helper, which is for fetching the data. And that, um, it basically returns um, the data, which is reactive um, 
uh, it's basically a reactive version of the data. So you can see uh, this syntax basically means that it returns the data, but we name it as a review round history because that's what it is. And then here you can see uh, that we have to reference through review round history dot value. Um, that's because this is reactive. So if if this changes, you know, it will be correctly detected. And um, you know, this is this is I don't want to uh, get uh, too much in detail for composition API. Vue.js documentation explained this better. But this is uh, you know how things get uh, connected because this is uh, reactive um, data structure. And this is uh, just simple function. And again, I just name it in, in the way that it's a kind of easy to follow. And so in here, I basically just trigger the fetch. And as a result, on the background, it does the fetch. And this reactive property at the beginning is null. But once it's fetched, it changes and it suddenly has the data uh, when it arrives. And all these uh, you know reactive properties, the computed properties, uh, can uh, calculate, um, uh, you know, the correct uh, value from that. Um, um, okay, uh, so hopefully it, it was uh, somehow easy to follow. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go uh, for questions. Eric, I see you've got a question in the text there. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not sure if this is because it's in Kenya and that may be answered, but um, does the fetch review run history, does that not, is that not async? Does that not need to be awaited or does that have to do with the game within defined components? So, sorry, it's a little hard to hear me. Um, uh, Eric, it's, yeah, it's quite difficult to hear you, to be honest. Maybe I will check the written uh, version because I didn't fully uh, hear that. The, um, the yeah, yeah, chat. yeah. I, yeah, I did found it. Uh, it doesn't need to be evaded because this is how this reactive thing work. Um, is, this is not. Um, this all basically gets executed synchronously, and through using these reactive components, things gets updated over time. So uh, when calling the use fetch. Um, it executes things behind the scenes, but then it sets, uh, let me actually maybe show you the code that might actually help to set it best. So at the beginning, uh, the data is the reactive value with the null. And after the fetch is called, what it does, it's literally just set the data uh, to the result. And through that reactivity, which is built in, you know, in these refs, suddenly everything that's dependent on this information, which is all these computed things, everything is depending on this review round history. It gets recomputed because the, you know, uh, this this got change, and suddenly all these inform all these properties gets the accurate values. Um, yeah. So imagine that this all basically you know, it's executed synchronously. There is no waiting happening. It's basically just, you know, connect all together through, you know, this reactivity, uh, which view has. So uh, uh, behind the scene, mm -hmm. it's one call, right? To, to, to the API. Behind yes. The... One call, okay. Uh -huh. Yorda, I'm wondering, so you've got the, um the page you've got the page store sometimes you've got some mm -hmm. additional storybook kind of meta um and you've, you've got the back end code on the server side that then populates the state for example and sends the data forward um this is a matter of preference i suppose but could you maybe say a few words about how you would start like would you start with um you know a mocked api response in storybook and then go forward from there into the front end or would you uh, start some other way uh, especially with regard to like the the page and the Pena store, those two strike me as um, maybe tricky to co-develop. 
So I would li literally copy paste the example page and start putting more stuff in it. So if you look at the example page structure, you have the main example page component and you have the main example page store. And that kind of had the simple example of fetching the data and calculating some properties. So you basically can just delete that and start putting uh, your logic inside it and the same thing for, for the template. So that's that would be one start. In terms of the data, uh, then if there is existing API already for the data, I would probably start interacting with the real API and get the responsive and copy paste them to the storybook. Um, in the in the storybook, we can see uh, example how that can be done. So it's also in the example stories. So there is a way how you can easily mock the data. So for example, if I would be interacting with some particular existing API, I would update the URL to reflect that. And then uh, in here, I'm just, I'm just delaying the response to indicate the, that it's being loaded, but normally this doesn't need to be here. And then you basically just respond uh, with the JSON, uh, which, which you can save to the file. And that would be like the copy paste situation from the existing API. Obviously copying from existing API is easier because you don't have to come up with the structure. If it's obviously something that uh, is to be developed in future and you don't want to wait for it, uh, then obviously you can, you know, mock that data, uh, you know, yourself and over time, you know, uh, make it closer to the existing API or the same as the uh, actual API. Um, but this is how, yeah, this is how you basically mock the interaction with the API. And this is how you mock um, the data which are passed at the beginning. That's great. Thank you. And uh, you said this before, but I could use a bit of repetition. Um, can you say again when you would choose to use the PNAS store versus when you wouldn't for a, for a page or a component? Right, so in the documentation, I basically uh, mentioned three use cases, which I so far still believe uh, are relevant. So it would be for every page, um, you know, as a uh, main kind of business logic uh, place for that page. And if it's simple page, then this will often be enough. Then if that page has a site models, which has quite independent content, a uh, good example is in the submission listing. If I open submission details, I want to fetch all these submission details and there is lots of content inside it. I want to do it separately. So this, uh, you know, site model deserves its own store um, again. So it doesn't get too big. Obviously I could write everything in the page, uh, page store, but it would get too big. So that's the second case where I would do it. Uh, for everything else, like sm a small, simple components, these can just get the data directly from the page store. They because uh, we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to create a um, store for every component. Um, and and we also don't want to kind of um, spread the business logic all over the place. Because even if we wouldn't be using the um, PNA stores, the practice, which is uh, quite common, is that you decide that some controller or top uh, components, they handle the logic and then basically pass everything through the props, you know, and get the actions and handle that. So it's not spread all over. Um, so this is how things are, you know, organized usually anyway. Uh, so we only just do things that for these kind of main components, we intentionally uh, put it inside the PNA store for the reasons I mentioned. And the third uh, use case, uh, which I called like self-contained um, uh, components, is where there is something a little bit more complex and is doing uh, multiple things. Good example is, uh, or first example that I'm currently building is managing files. So in, in the files, you want to list them, but you also want to be able to add new files uh, or remove some files. And there is quite a lot of logic. And you might also want to display that multiple times on one page or different pages. So there is benefit to develop it as a kind of cell contained um, component, which where you basically just pass 
couple of props similar to site model, but it's able to kind of fetch the data on its own um, and uh, you know manage this data on its own. In in general, the good moment is if you would want to start like writing some a API calls inside the component, then you probably want to put it to some store. Um, but generally, it, it should be these uh, three cases, uh, but it's still quite early. So maybe uh, this might still evolve a little bit, but this seems to be like working quite well. That's great. Thank you. Um... I'll pause for hands in case somebody else wants to ask a question, but we are at the end of our dev call. Um, to loop back to where you started, Yarda, um, this was a third-party contribution. So uh, Nicolas and Pierre at Laval were the folks who um, uh, provided the, the code that uh, Yarda reviewed and kind of finessed as the example here. So um, thanks to that third-party contributor, uh, Laval's uh, been very good to us and uh, we appreciate their work. Yes, uh, very much agree. Um, okay, that's all from me. Um, thank you very much.